my speech. Just some common sense basics. Son, yes, Daddy. You want to be great? Yes, sir. Why? So I can elevate other people around me. That's right, son. That's called impacting people. That's what it's all about. So you left television, you're a college professor now. You're going to be teaching people that don't have the same values as you that you do. Impact them anyway. You're going to have people that are slick. People ask me, they ask me all the time about my speaking style. It's because I spent 25 years waking up the dead. Come on, somebody. I spent 25 years waking up folks that are hungover. So you've got to have people that don't have the same values as you. I remember uh, one student left my class because her parents said that uh, they didn't want a nigger teaching their kids. So you're going to have people that disagree with you, impact them anyway. You're going to have people that say mean things about you, impact them anyway. I'm talking about making an impact, y'all. Not talking about winning some popularity contest. So proud of the two of you guys and the job you're doing. You talk about the epitome of making an impact. Going into ethnicities and cultures that may or may not be foreign. Why? Because it's worth the investment. Reminds me of what our grandparents used to do, right? Son, you want to be great? You want to make an impact? Remember this basic. Remember this lesson from a third grade dropout. Don't judge people. Evaluate? Absolutely. Give a ticket? You bet. <laughs> Give an F? Absolutely. But don't you judge no one. Son, no one is beneath you. No one. No one is beneath you, son. Don't judge. Son, I've been all over the world. Yes, sir. I've seen good and bad in every shape. The tendency of a human being is to judge people based on their perception. But what if that perception is wrong? If all you see is what you see, you don't see all there is that needs to be seen. I gotta tell you all a story. Where are my third grade teachers? Raise your hands. I've had a crush on every third grade teacher I've ever had. <laughs> third grade teachers, raise your hands and keep them up. I got a crush on you, ma'am. I got a crush on you, ma'am. Sir, I got a crush on you. I got a crush on you, okay. The fact that I'm telling you this story 55 years later, 63, ought to tell you something about impact. Third grade teacher, this is Heyman, H A I M A N. Never on the front page of the paper. She was never on NPR. Today, our guest is Mrs. Heyman. Never on anything like that. Listen to the impact. I had a propensity for talking when it wasn't my turn in class. And so back in the 60s, when the teacher said, you have to stay after school, and then one thing, you go to a blackboard and you write, I will not talk in class 100,000 times. <laughs> On this particular day, Mrs. Hayman met me with a book. First a speech and then a book. Ricky, yes ma'am. Ricky, it's obvious you have a gift. And Mrs. Hayman is going to teach you when it's appropriate to use that gift. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Now, Ricky, I want you to sit down for the next 15 minutes. I want you to read this book. It was written by a woman sitting on the Oregon coast named Beverly Clary. And within 15 minutes, I was mesmerized by Henry Huggins and his friends, Beezus and Ramona, his paper route, and his dog, Ribsy. What's your point? She didn't judge chubby little talkative student didn't judge, but saw something, and decided she was going to up her game and make an impact. Planted some pretty significant seeds that have bloomed. Because of the seeds planted by a third grade teacher today, I have a vociferous appetite for knowledge and an efficacious vocabulary. I want to ask you a question. Don't answer. Just look straight ahead. I don't want you to blow your cover. Are you judging prematurely? I get it. I was a teacher. I know there are some names you will never be able to name your own children. I get that. <laughs> Everybody say, don't judge. Don't judge. Can I tell you a story real quick? And wait, 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 I'm just waiting for a response. Can I tell you a story real quick? So I, I did an assignment about a year ago to a, a luxury hotel in San Francisco. This hotel had lost a star. And, 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 and the manager wanted me to come in and talk to 700 employees on Monday. Remember that fact, on Monday. So I, I put together this great speech titled, uh, You Can't Be a Five Star Hotel if You Hire Three Star Employees. Anyway, I thought it was a lovely speech. <laughs> and so it's my hometown, 
it's, it's in a really nice part of town called the Knob Hill section of San Francisco. That's code for old Italian money. And it's, it's, where, the, it's where the Fairmont, the Mark, the Mark Hopkins, all those hotels are. And so I, I decided to show up on a Sunday so that I could simply observe undercover. Nobody knew me, nobody knew what I was doing. I, I show up and I'm dressed like this, and I rented a car since it was my hometown. I rented a black sedan. I show up in a black sedan dressed like this on a Sunday. First words out of the valet's mouth. Hi, sir, good afternoon. Who are you here to pick up? <laughs> I had a lovely conversation with that gentleman. And to give him oxygen the next day when he saw who was on stage. <laughs> the conversation revealed that he was a really good guy and he wasn't racist at all. Worse, he was ignorant. When you judge, you are planting seeds of ignorance. Why not plant seeds of greatness? Everybody say, don't judge. Don't judge. Tell me more, Daddy. Son, you want to be great? Don't ever be on time. What do you want to be? Early. Talk to me, y'all. Son, you better be an hour early than a minute late. There, other than a medical emergency, there is no excuse. Why are you all laughing? Do I got to let people down here? Y'all late? Let me talk to you. What's your name? Debbie. Debbie. Hey, Debbie, what's up, girl? <laughs> Don't blame her, Debbie. Don't worry about it, girl. Don't blame her. Hey, but Debbie, let me throw something at you because you're going to never be late again. I have faith in you. There's no excuse other than a medical or family emergency for you to be late. Well, you, you just couldn't believe the road construction leave the night before. <laughs> How many of you grew up with, 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 with mothers and fathers that always set their clocks ahead and you never knew what time it was? Yeah. Yeah. You'd rather be an hour early than a minute late. My father had the breakfast and lunch at the California Maritime Academy. He had to be at work at 5 o'clock in the morning. The academy was only 15 minutes from our house. My mother said for 30 years, he left at 3.45 a.m. <laughs> one day she said, Daddy, why do you leave so early? Listen to his answer. One of these days, one of my boys will be up and catch me in the act of excellence. Aristotle said, you are what you repeatedly do. Therefore, excellence ought to be a habit, not an act. Harvard Business Review, September 2004. The article is titled Deep Smarts. Here's the thesis. Lecturing, which is the rock bed of what we do, is the worst kind of teaching method. And if you want to get the intended message across, model the behavior I want to ask you, what are you modeling? What are you modeling? My father was a master teacher, and yet he was a third grade dropout. Son, yes daddy, you always show up early. Son, yes daddy, if you're ever somebody's boss, make sure you inconvenience yourself every day for the sake of those who follow you. Let me talk to the superintendents. The deputy superintendent. Let me talk to the principals and vice principals. Let me talk to everybody in a leadership position. In this day and age, it has become quite the thing to look the part of a leader. But if you want true leadership authority, inconvenience yourself every day for the sake of those who follow you. You, you will begin to make an impact. Are y'all with me? I'm working harder than Cool in the Gang up here. Y'all, come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sir, Cool in the Gang is an African American singer. <laughs> Everybody say, don't judge. <laughs> Everybody say, early. Hey. Here's one, son, be kind. Kind means you're never lost. Kindness used to be a value, now it's a commodity that we partner to get what we think we might need to appease the sensibilities of folks we don't even know. But I'm here to tell you that kindness is not situational. Kindness is what our mothers demanded. Am I right, y'all? Yeah. Being kind, being kind will stop the world. Being kind will cause people to, 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 to listen to what you have to say. Just be kind. Kindness used to be a value. No longer a value. But let's reinstate it. Let's reinstate it by being kind in front of those who are privileged and called to serve. Everybody say kindness. Nice. Let me give you one more. Son, you want to be great? Be a servant. Make sure your servant's talent is bigger than your ego. Ego is the anesthesia that deadens the pain of stupidity. That, my friend, is a hallmark moment. You might want me to say that one again so that you can write it down and share it with your favorite in-law. 
ego is the anesthesia that deadens the pain of stupidity. You might want to write it down. Because remember, 50% of what you hear, you forget just like that. If there are 80% of you lose 30% of the next one of ours, as you may see tonight up here, the second glass of Chardonnay, you know what I'm saying? Something like this. <laughs> ego is the sunflower that emanates out of the <laughs> sunflower. <laughs> you can't impact somebody. You cannot impact somebody if it's all about you. You can't do it. You have to serve people. You are servants. If, if you're not a servant, you better get out of this profession and go work for the Department of Motor Vehicles. Those suckers don't serve nobody. <laughs> and we all learned how to serve when we were growing up. In the 60s, television was everything. How many of y'all under 40? Raise your hands. Under 40. Lady, you know you need to put your hand down. <laughs> how, many, how, many are, how many are under 40 legitimately? Raise your hands. Y'all under 40, you're looking at an original voice activated remote control. It worked like this. Boy, get your big butt up and change your channel. Right away, daddy. And hold your breath ears. I'm trying to watch wrestling, okay? And if you, if you had country parents, you all remember this over 40? Do you remember your parents would buy a television that had a picture tube? And the tube would wear out after a couple years. And so the tube is out. The television doesn't work, but your parents kept the television. Because it was a lovely piece of furniture. You know what I'm talking about? And when they bought television number two, they put it on top of the top of the television. And if you were really country, like I suspect some of y'all are, you had rabbit ears. And if you were really country, you put some foil on the rabbit ears. And if you were really country, you stuck a coat hanger in the rabbit ears. And if you were really country, on the top of your television, you said you had a pair of pliers. Because that turner would wear out, you've got to turn the channel with it.
several years ago when Ozzie Smith walked into the Hall of Fame. During his induction speech, he said, and I quote this portion word for word, all my life I've been told what I could not do. I decided to pursue excellence, and I was guided by one motto. Good enough isn't good enough if it can be better, and better isn't good enough if it can be best. Here's our calling card, your speaker included, for making this year better than last year. Friends, good enough isn't good enough if it can be better. I thought, I'm almost done. Don't go get on me now. I'm working harder than James Brown up here, y'all. <laughs> Sir, James Brown was the godfather of the soul. Come on! Can be. Yes. Let's model that to a, a world that, that has fallen in love with mediocrity. Let me bring this speech to a close. It has been, that better be Jesus calling you, sir. <laughs> Have you heard of the word vibrate, sir? <laughs> I'm playing with you, buddy. He's turning red. Hey, not all of us can do that. <laughs> I know what some of y'all are thinking. Maybe next year we can just have a normal white guy come up with this brown suit on, perhaps. Hey, don't leave, man. I'm getting ready to be good right now. Don't leave. I'm playing with you. I'm, I like to do that. I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> it's been a privilege to be with y'all. And what I'd like to do is just take a moment. Can y'all give me five minutes? That was a very overwhelming. <laughs> Who said that? Are you an Aggie? Uh, my daughter is. There you go, brother. I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> like y'all care. So I'm. <laughs>
about, I gotta stay in the lock, don't I? <laughs> After about 20 minutes or so, somebody didn't get that. <laughs> Real Negro, regular Negro. <laughs> Daddy had one more lesson to teach me. He would die a year later. 
And the classroom for this lesson was called a funeral home. The chalkboard for this lesson was Trina's casket. It was at her casket that I saw my father do something that I'd never seen before. That big old Texan broke down and cried. Trina was his daughter, not his daughter. I know many of you ladies know what I'm talking about. And he stood there and he cried. He sobered up. He turned to me. Looked me in the eye. Put his arms around me and said three words to change my life. He said, son, just stand. Doc, I don't know if there's anything more profound that I can share with your folks than these words. Keep standing. Don't quit. Don't give up. Keep doing that which is right. Keep standing. You will always, in a career, have one or more of that parent. Don't quit! Keep standing. Regardless of what they might say. Regardless of the lies that they told. Regardless of the latest diagnosis. Regardless of the loss. Taken from a man who stood at the edge of his wife's grave, holding the hands of two little boys. Keep standing. Keep standing. So I kept standing. And y'all are not going to believe what happened. Two years later, a miracle. My heart starts to beat again. I start to speak again. I am speaking in a room a little smaller than this when all of a sudden I spot the finest woman I've ever met in my life again. My friends can't believe it. You got two. <laughs> I'm married to big old Gertrude, and you got two. <laughs> First thing Janet did, y'all would love Janet. Grew up in a county called Athens County. Went to some party school called Ohio University. <laughs> I'm married me in Ohio, and y'all. Ooh, this is about farm girl, I'm trying to tell y'all. We all, by the way, question the legitimacy of mom's degree, because Ohio <laughs> University. The first thing Janet did was she adopted my little boys, fulfilling Trina's last wish that her babies not go through life without a mommy. She didn't call Trina's family and said, let's remain close. We are as close to Trina's family today than we were 25 years ago. And then Janet and I decided to do something on a Friday night that we thought was a good idea at the time. More children. <laughs> it's been good. Now we go from 36 down to 19. Kathy, show that picture. Here's my family. I show you this picture for one reason. I have nothing to do with this picture. This picture is the legacy of a third grade dropout dad. Listen to me, Rachel. The legacy of a man that placed a demand upon me during my worst days to not quit, to not give up. This is a picture of his legacy. And I ask each and every one of you the same question I ask myself. What will your legacy look like one day? Let me close. Take the picture off the screen. Recently, I went back to College Station, Texas. When Trina got sick, she still wanted to volunteer. You would love her, Judge. So she volunteered in the school's library, from a librarian's. And she eventually became the school librarian, even in between chemotherapy treatments. We took her rocking chair into the library so she would be more comfortable. She worked for years as a school librarian at Grasses Christian School until a week before she died. A couple of months ago, I went back to College Station, Texas, where they dedicated the Trina L. Grigsby Memorial Library.
carve your name on hearts. Daddy showed me what a man looks like. A dying wife taught me how to be a man. Two days before she died, two days, no hair because of chemo. Her tummy pooched out because of a liver not working. She weighed about 80 pounds. She's sitting on the couch, surrounded by pillows. I'm back here in the kitchen where I can keep an eye on her. She's getting weaker by the minute. I look out of my peripheral vision and I see our then youngest son, Andrew, walk down the stairs with his shirt. And this is what I hear Mama say to him. Andrew, Mama, not always going to be here to help you. She was saying goodbye to her baby. Waited for Andrew to leave. Walked over and I sat next to Trina without her breathing labor at all. As clearly as I'm talking to y'all right now, these were some of my wife's last words to me. Ricky, it doesn't matter to me any longer how long I live. What matters to me most is how I live. I have been so privileged to come to this portion of Ohio to meet with you incredible people and professionals to ask y'all one question question I ask myself every day. How you living? How you living? How you living? Because how you live will determine the impact that you make. I would highly recommend you to live the way our parents and grandparents used to live by taking a page out of their playbook. In fact, I highly recommend basics like these. Don't judge. Show up early. Be kind. Have a servant's town bigger than your ego. Make sure that everything you do, you do with excellence. Remember that it's never wrong to do the right thing. That how you do anything is how you do everything. That you are what you repeatedly do. So make excellence a habit, not an act. To execute those basics better than anybody else. Not to attain rewards, but to lift those around you to a higher level. Because when you live like that, you know what I know? The impact that you make this year will last far after you have left this earth. And that roar you will hear from time to time in your heart will be me from Dallas, Texas cheering you on. It has been a privilege to be with you. Until we meet again, have the greatest year of your career May God bless you and you all. May God keep you and protect you.